Hi there, Bob here from Insidium, and on today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can take the fantastic NX Color modifier and how we can use multiple blended color layers for some really cool, more advanced rendering effects. So let's get that clock started and we'll jump into Cinema 4D. In our scene, we have this long, thin emission of particles. Let's go to the emitter object tab. We're in rectangle mode, width of 50, height of zero. In the emission, we're in rate mode, 70 frames life with 15 variation, 2,000 particles per frame, and we've got a speed of 100, radius of three. That's giving us this. Let's just reposition this camera from the top down, because we're going to make a bit of a swirly flame effect. Let's go to X particles, nexus, turbulence. And this time we're going to use a wavy turbulence. Let's put it quite strong, 11. We're going to whack our octaves on full for detail, but then put the persistence down to 20. So we'll get a nice middle ground of fine detail, but some nice curly licks as well. That's looking really good. Very nice. Okay, so let's get our rendering sorted out first. We'll go to the emitter and we want a tag, render, redshift object tag. And in here, in the particles tab, we want to put this on point instance, and we'll start on maybe 0 0.03. And if we hit render, we're starting to render those particles. Okay, let's switch that off. Let's get the material sorted. We're going to go to create materials, standard redshift material, and stick it on our emitter. Let's double click this. So we're going to do the same basic additive material we've done in previous top tips. Let's take away the base color, take away the reflection. And we'll switch everything else down. We want uh, emission on two. And we want to put the particle color into this geometry opacity. To do that, double click, type in user, because we want the color user data. And we need to get the right attribute name. To find that, we go to presets, particles, particle color. That's what we want. And then we stick that into the geometry opacity input. And if we hit render, now we've got an additive material. OK, cool. So what we want to do now is we want to color these particles uh, at simulation time in grayscale. So to do that, let's go to Insidium, X Particles, uh, Nexus, and bring in an NX color. And we're going to do a few layers. The first layer, we're going to do a gradient by parameter. Let's double click and name this one age to stay organized. We're going to do this in grayscale. So let's get rid of these knots and we'll take this last blue knot and let's make that black and we're going to leave it on the default gradient parameter age so now if we hit play you'll see our particles are born black and they gradually go white over their life let's just bring that knot down a bit so they turn white a bit more quickly and if we hit render now because this black and white color is going into the particles and we're in the uh, geometry opacity node remember the fully black particles are now totally transparent OK, so we can now add color to this black and white in our material. Let's do that quickly. We'll go to here. Let's double click. And we want to put this particle color into a color ramp to remap it. Let's double click, type ramp, and we'll bring our ramp up. And we want the particle color to go into the alt input of the ramp. And we want the output of that to then go into the geometry opacity. Let's just move this across. So in this ramp, now we can change the default black and white to a colorful one, which will then map it to the particle color. So let's load a preset and we'll bring in this cold desk one. This will do. Let's double click that. And now you can see we have got that mapped to our particle age, which is pretty cool. But actually, we want them when they're first born to keep that transparency just to kind of fade out this very defined emission point. So let's just add a new knot and make it black and then we kind of get that fade in again and the particles change their color now over their life and this might work for your scene and that's fine but let's add a little bit more detail here because it's it's very obvious the transition through the gradient is in it and we can actually make this a bit more sophisticated by adding some color layers so let's get that sorted we'll just stop rendering we're going to duplicate this age one, control, drag, let go, and we're going to call this one heading. And this gradient by parameter layer, we've called it heading because we'll change the age to direction and we'll use the heading axis. So because this is on top, 
and the blend mode's normal, it's now going to ignore this age layer and it's just going to be that heading information. And there you can see the black and white um, changing. Okay, so if we hit render now, obviously, uh, obviously we've got loads of big holes in our sim because all of these black ones are now totally transparent. So we want this and we want to mix it with our age layer. So what we're going to do is this. Let's just bring this white knot down a little bit so it's a bit more pronounced. And what we're going to do is change the black knot so it's not black uh, because that's too much. It's making it totally transparent. Let's just lighten it up a bit. So there's a subtle difference between grey to white here. And that's what it looks like in our sim. And now if we take this heading layer and set it to multiply, we're going to get that nice age from black to white. But now we've included in some of that heading uh, greyness which is going to look really cool. So now when we hit render, we haven't got a strict purple to green transition, but we've got some bits of blue flashing in from that heading angle. Cool. Let's add a little bit more. We'll duplicate the heading. Let's call this one pitch. And we'll change the direction axis of this one to pitch. Let's leave everything else the same. It's in multiply. And now we're adding a little bit more of that directional changing information into our black and white, which then translates into our color. And look, we're getting some nice kind of purple flashes appearing up here. So that's looking way more interesting. Brilliant. So now we have done that. What we could do is, look, let's activate this cache. Now, we've cached these particles. And this is exactly the same. The only difference is in the emitter, we changed the birth rate way up to 30,000 per frame. So now we've got millions of particles in the scene. Let's uh, render this one now. And it's going to be way more detailed. But with additive particles, the more particles you have, the smaller they need to be rendered. So let's go to our Redshift object tag and put our scale multiplier down to, say, 0 0.01 yeah and now we're getting a really nice detailed simulation with that color and it's not just a, an age blend of the gradient we've got these licks of color going up and when rendered out this looks really really nice